What's up, Christian caregiver? It's Lizette, your dementia coach, and you are listening to Christian Dementia Caregiving, the podcast where I teach Bible-believing Christians how to make their dementia caregiving journey easier for them, how to ease the burden of caregiving. And in light of that, today's episode is really a episode where we are going to unpack why taking a vacation on a cruise with your loved one with dementia is the best way to actually get an opportunity to have respite, education, as well as wonderful opportunities to make memories with your loved one. If you haven't listened to episode 98, It is where I talked about my experience with Kathy related to a dementia-supported cruise. So I really want you to prayerfully think about this. I will be the keynote speaker on the cruise in January from the 4th of January to the 11th next January. So without further ado, welcome back to Christian Dementia Caregiving Kathy and our conversation today is related to how a dementia supported cruise can improve your quality of life as a caregiver. Well, Kathy, I am so excited that you're back here this time. This is, you are, I think, only the second person I've had on for a second time on the podcast. So welcome back to Christian Dementia Caregiving. I am honored and excited and happy to get to be here. Wonderful. Um, So Kathy, why don't you tell us exactly how you got involved in the work that you do now, because it is extremely unique and different, and it is more than just a quote-unquote job. It's truly a ministry. So tell people a little bit about that. I am a registered nurse. I am a geriatric neurology nurse, and I worked for years in senior living, home health, hospice, and I loved, I loved what I did. But after about 10 years as the director of a continuum of care facility, Mm -hmm. There was never a day that somebody was not angry. Mm -hmm. Either the peas aren't cooked right, somebody's sitting in my seat, I don't have enough dimes to play bingo, Um, (laughs) my my daughter didn't send the right color flowers. It's just like, okay. There had to be a way that no matter what the diagnosis, Mm -hmm. people still get to enjoy every single day that God gives us. Yep. And so every single day that God gives us, we're supposed to be here. And there's Mm -hmm. a purpose. And I believe that my genuine purpose is to create travel experiences, joyful for caregivers and their loved ones to be able to travel together, creating a respite opportunity for those caregivers Mm -hmm. with some amazing concrete, solid education, which is where Lizette comes into my world because we want to present things that actually are realistic and helpful. And at the same time, we're creating some adult daycare programming and having a blast. My goal is to create wonderful lifelong memories for those of us who have struggled through this caregiving role and perfect happy moments for all of our loved ones. Mm. I can tell you that having been on one of the cruises earlier this year, uh, I 100% could see that, uh, both in my own experience, as well as the experience of the people that we were helping. It, It truly is, you know, you have to have hair on your teeth in order to be you, Kathy, because it's like, it's like juggling, it's like herding cats. I mean, trying to keep everybody on track and, and sane and, you know, safe because that's a big part of of this experience is ensuring both the safety of the people who are on the cruise, but the staff. And you do a tremendous job of 
juggling all of those pieces and really, I believe, giving the people who are on uh, these supported cruises an, an experience of a lifetime that they will never forget. Um, I, I just pray that every single family that we have the honor to work with takes away something that they that they feel and know um, was just the perfect opportunity. For sure. So I've had many, many families travel with us numerous times. And mm -hmm. in the same conversation, I've had numerous families travel with us as this is the bucket list trip. Mm -hmm. So no matter how people look at it, we want to be there to create opportunities for real information, real help. A long time ago, way before COVID, <laughs> um, a young lady looked at me at almost at the end of an Alaskan cruise and said, Kath, if you have tootled us, watched after us, taken care of him, let us have an amazing, a happy experience. We've had a blast. But if you don't give me something to hang on to when I leave this ship, I'm leaving him here with you. <laughs> okay, Ellie, well, we can't do that. So let's figure out. So at that point, I knew the programming has to be solid mm -hmm. and it has to be relevant to what is going to help people. Maybe they don't need it today, mm -hmm. but they might need it two weeks from now or two months from now. They just don't know they need it yet. And the information that we try to impart is useful, helpful, honest, down to earth, and taught by accomplished professionals that have the skill set and the knowledge to actually present solid right. information. So over the several years that you've been doing these cruises, what kind of topics have you had in the educational component for people? Because, you know, it's, uh, I'm going to talk a, about it in a couple of different ways, you know, number one, the education, and then we're going to talk about the respite part of it, and then talk about the experience part of it. Because it really is three very different uh, goals or purposes behind each of them. But related to the education part, tell me a little bit about what kind of education over the years have you done? We work with when and how and how do we appropriately and when can we use hospice. Mm -hmm. We talk about managing difficult behavior situations that can include refusal to take a shower, non-interest in eating, refusal to take medications. Mm -hmm. We work with self-care for these caregivers mm -hmm. because yeah. it's absolutely mandatory. I mean, that sounds so romantically wonderful, but it is important and it is mandatory mm -hmm. that all of us take that moment to let your heart rate come back to normal. And I am your poster child because I didn't do that. And it's um, eventually your body says, look, you idiot. And <laughs> God did not create our bodies to just be on um, high alert, high adrenaline constantly. So we have to step back. Uh, we do a lot of music therapy. I try to mm -hmm. teach mm -hmm. music therapy options and explain and show and demonstrate to the right with their loved ones. How do we make this work? Why does it work? How does it how does it trigger different thoughts, attitudes, and actions, and then demonstrate how they can make it work even in public? So, I mean, we we try to be very realistic. We do movement and music because the more our bodies move, the healthier we're going to stay. The longer we're going to be able to move. Mm -hmm. We work with a lot of Parkinson's people that also have dementia or some that don't have Parkinson's dementia. And, you know, once again, moving is just mandatory. When we're in the Caribbean, like we will be in January, Holland America's private island is definitely my favorite spot. Um, that was my favorite spot, too. And beach wheelchairs and picnics in the sand. And I don't care if there's sand in the hot dog. It was just amazingly fun. Just, just in a, amazing, happy situations. And, you know, we use all of those to demonstrate um, a lot of neuroplasticity. Mm -hmm. So how do we use sight, sound, taste, smell to open up different neural pathways? Right. And to just bring people back to the moment. I, I don't remember if I mentioned this on the previous podcast, but I know that I'm, I've told you this story. As I was flying home after the last cruise, I was on the airport 
And right next to me, sitting where I was having my dinner, there was a couple and we struck up a conversation. And it came about that they were on our cruise with us. And then, you know, I, I t- kind of told them what I had done there. And they're like, oh, we were next to you on the beach. We were next to you on the beach. We watched you the whole time. And I'm like, oh, they're like, it was amazing. So these are people who have like no skin in the game. You know, they're not caregivers. They're, they were on vacation. And providentially, they were right where we were, where we had the beach wheelchairs, where we had the people that we were helping. And they're like, what struck them? I said, what did they notice? They're like, how much fun the people who were being helped were having and how much fun we as um, the staff were having with the people that we were helping. And they were um, also extremely complimentary of the fact that we had taken taken them out onto the beach and still continued to have them live. So it was a tremendous, wonderful testimony that that we don't necessarily think about as we're going through something like this because we're living in the moment. But what what struck me about the whole conversation is there are too many people who are hiding their person, living with some sort of something away because they're embarrassed or because they don't want to embarrass that person or whatever the reason is. But there's there's no reason for us to do that. We can continue to go out into the community and continue to live. So a lot of solid education, a lot of various different things, depending on the cruise, lots of different professional speakers, and then re- related to the respite side. So for people who who are listening, who might only understand respite as, you know, maybe you know, somebody going to an adult day program or going to a facility for respite for a period of time. How do we do the respite on the cruise? Well, first of all, we we actually take with us dementia-trained activity specialists, sometimes one, sometimes two, just depending upon the number of clients that we have. And we create programming that's actually person-centered. So, they are all they are in the process right now of calling each and every client and talking with the caregiver about what does mom do when she's home? What does she enjoy doing? What does she what kind of music does she like? Uh, what are her activities when she's um, at another facility elsewhere? You know, so that when we get onto the ship, we are prepared to keep her comfortable, confident, engaged in what she's interested in, um, and then truly and truly just happy. Our, I mean, our goal is to take the caregivers and do something with them that's going to be a blast. But when they come back, when the when the daycare time is over, I need their loved ones to be smiling, laughing, and just having fun. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, sometimes they're doing coordination skills with the ball. They're doing some exercises. They're doing music stuff. I mean, it totally depends on the group. Sometimes the groups are divided into two separate areas. So that one's doing puzzles and um, one's doing movement. It just depends on their skill and their ability and their interest. Are you feeling stressed as a Christian dementia caregiver? Let me help. I offer a monthly dementia care audit to one listener of this program to provide you with personalized but evidence-based strategies from a biblical perspective. We only have one session available each month. Don't miss this opportunity to make your dementia caregiving journey easier. Schedule your own dementia care audit today. Oh, I love that. It was that as an occupational therapist from background, my job was always to correct right? That, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to, to correct and make people better or, you know, work on, on the cognitive skills and improve, right? And what was so refreshing and rewarding for me, and even, you know, even in facilities when activities people work with people, there is a tendency, we have a tendency of correcting 
people when when we're playing a game or whatever. And I'll never forget, I still to today do not know how to play Uno, which is good because I just fly by the seat of my pants. I just play Uno. <laughs> I, yeah, well, I, I, so we played a game and we, we made up a game, me and the, the gentleman and two, two gentlemen and lady that, that I was with that day. And we had a blast. We had a blast. We totally had no rules to the game. And every single person won one of the hands of cards. We played three rounds of cards and all of them won. And every single one of them enjoyed themselves and what I found fascinating because we totally took all of the the cognitive demands away from them related to the task. It was very fluid, you know, you know they're like, well, which card do you think I should play? I'm like, oh, oh, I don't know, which one do you think? And then they would play the card. I'm like, that was the best card. And the, everybody was just so engaged. And it was such a lovely reminder to me that we we just need to meet the person living with dementia where they are because their retained abilities, yes, the rules didn't make sense. Yes, nobody followed any rules, but they were socially engaged. They were bantering with one another. They were bantering with me. You know, they were hiding their cards because they didn't want anybody to see. They did everything that a normal person would in a game other than understanding the rules. And so it was such a refreshing way to to connect with people in a in a different way. It was it, that that card game was probably one of my most favorite parts of the entire cruise and there are a lot of them, you know, notwithstanding the food, you know, that is that is just an entirely different subject. But okay, so we've done <laughs> education, we've talked about the rest of now talk about the what was the third one since I've slept? The activity, the social. The social, yes. Oh no, the making memories. The making memories part. It, it was, you know, one of the benefits of the cruise is the people on the cruise, all of the participants, the families get to know one another. They get to make lifelong friends with each other. Uh, several of the people on the cruise, I don't know if you know this, uh, but there's several of those people that are still in contact with me. They form friendships on their own. Uh, the families support each other and they support the the person that they are taking care of. And it's mm -hmm. just for people who have not had this experience, it truly is a one in a lifetime experience. Uh, situation or um, opportunity to to go on one of these cruises that take all of the pressure off of the the family caregiver to plan it and think through it and organize it they really just come and enjoy themselves and i just think it is a tremendous ministry so thank you for what you're doing people um, we, we work really hard to create those social experiences, caregiver circles, group dinner seating, mm -hmm. um, you know, mix it up every night so that everybody's sitting with different people, you know, set, set it up so that we're going on an excursion the next day all together. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some of the families would like one of my staff to join them on special excursions and that, and then we just make that happen. They have support whenever they want it, 24-7, registered nurse support 24-7. But if they don't want it, then we we just let them let them have their family time. So, you know, everybody handles it different mm -hmm. and everybody seeks to have different experiences. I have I have a, an extended family that's booked on the January cruise mm -hmm. and she's already planning what she gets to do with her adult kids and their spouses while they get to be with dad. And it's just it's just wonderful watching her create this experience that she wants so badly for her family and for for her husband who is very young i mean it's you know they they are they're finding ways to still live and seek happiness which is what we're really after mm -hmm, for sure so tell us about the january cruise it will sail january 4 through january 11 mm -hmm. 2025 
It is on Holland America, which is a very lovely ship, and I use Holland America a lot. They provide for us what we need when we're on that ship. Um, additional support, they are staffed at one person to every two travelers. So there is a, wait- a waiter, a-, a cabin steward available anytime you want one. We are going to be Eastern Caribbean. Mm-hmm. So it has a fantastic itinerary. and It's seven days long. And we are actively booking it now. Winter opportunities to go to the Caribbean are incredibly popular. Mm, and I'm so sure. there's, there's, I mean, everybody just wants out of this. So, you know, it's, it's, it's going to book up quickly, not necessarily from our part, but Holland America is going to book it. And then we won't have any more availability of space. Um, right. I do have a group. I do have group space. I have group rates that I can extend to all family members. So when you guys look on our website, those rates are with our professional support and the f- extended family members or friends that would like to join you come and enjoy my group contractual rates with the cruise line, which is uh, far beneficial to what they can locate elsewhere. Oh, for sure. So, and we, we try, we want the extended families to come. We want, we want people to come and listen and work with Lizette. We want them to be with us and have fun with their loved one. But we also want you guys to all take off and go to wine tasting. And I will be happy to volunteer to go with. (laughs) You know, those kind of activities happen while we're doing the adult day programming. You Mm -hmm. know, those kind of extremely fun experiences. You know, we're all there for, for spa day. Let's all just go to the spa. Let's hang out in the afternoon. Let's just enjoy you know, all, all of that, the moments of happiness that we can come up with. Holland America has an aqua spa on that ship. And it's just, it's just wonderful. It is. Um, it's this wonderful. is a new ship mm-hmm. from Holland America. Um, it, it is set up so that all of the staterooms have a walk-in shower. <gasps> it, they're wow. very, very nice. Very beautiful. Walk-in showers. So, so every single stateroom can be accommodated. With an elevated toilet seat, detachable shower head, shower chair in the bathrooms, you know, so those pieces can always be added. Mm-hmm. And we are also readily uh, renting scooters, wheelchairs, um, transport chairs for people that don't want to bring them with them. Then we just rent one and it shows up in your cabin miraculously. <laughs> It is very miraculous how things just show up in your cabin. I'm like, the logistics on these cruises are phenomenal. Like, they're almost Amazon worthy. You know, it's like Amazon just shows up at your door and you don't know how it got there. Things just happen on the cruise that are, that, that I'm like, I thought about it a lot as we were on the cruise how well the the staff really are trained on those cruises. They do a phenomenal job. So with this particular cruise in January, and anybody who is listening who is interested in doing this, there's absolutely no pressure, but it's not one of these things that you can wait until December to do. If you are interested, you need to speak to Kathy and see if it if how it can fit into your life and your schedule because I know from the previous cruise we went on those those other cabins get booked up and then then you know we get capped you get capped with how many people you can support because there's not enough room you know there's only a certain amount of room on the ship but one of the things that Kathy and I have been talking about related to this particular cruise is the education component and I've started thinking about it I haven't prepared anything yet but I'm really concentrating and thinking on how can we make it a very interactive learning opportunity for families related to the oftentimes difficult behaviors people experience like Kathy was mentioning things like you know struggling to eat or or not wanting to eat anymore or weight loss or all of those kinds of things and so my my purpose behind the education on this one is to do very short educational style presentations, but then really do a lot of practical application and question and answer because then people can actually 
have the ability to to try different techniques and we can coach people through how to better be able to communicate with the person that they're taking care of. So just viable, practical, usable ideas, thoughts, suggestions. It's not a rule book for sending home with you. It's just stuff that you're going to need. You just don't necessarily know that you're going to need it yet. <laughs> but it's it's going to it's all going to come around and unfortunately we haven't cured this disease. So we will we have to figure out how to deal with it one day at a time. So well, the other thing I didn't mention is that we are we are, my company, Kathy, the the group that we take will be supported with professionals at a ratio of one professional to every three travelers. Mm -hmm. So there will be more than just Lizette and me. <laughs> And there will be another RN at least. Um, there will be an activity director I mentioned. There will be several men that are very, very helpful. We meet and greet every single family at the airport, uh, assist with luggage, accompany you back to the group hotel. On the other side of that, we also provide a company to flights. So anybody that just really thinks that this is too far to get to Fort Lauderdale, uh, we will provide accompanied flights. And that's part of our um, additional programming availability. Um, the other piece of what we can do is provide additional assistance in the cabin. We can provide additional hands-on dressing and bathing assist at a minimal hourly fee. As long as I know that we need to do that, then that kind of, that kind of structure is absolutely available. I, you know, it's, it's the detail. It's the detail that goes into this. Kathy, you know, hands down, that makes your cruises so successful for families. You know, I mean, I, I've, I've had one experience. It was a wonderful experience, and I just, I just remember how much detail went into the planning. So, uh, anybody who's listening who who understands, you know, logistics or going on on vacation, imagine doing that for a group of 32 people and making sure that everybody has a phenomenal experience. So I just, I, I just think it's, I really, really want, like I'm an occupational therapist background in training. Right. And it totally changed my world. Like I, I really cannot tell you how much being on that cruise with, all of those families and the the people living with dementia, how much that changed me. It, it because really when, we're, when we're in a professional setting, in, a, in an institution, everyone looks at life differently. And, yeah. and when our goal of the day is to make them have, create a happy situation, give those caregivers an amazing respite, you know, create a caregiver circle that actually comes out with information that they need you know that it's a different way to look at things i hope that some of your listeners um attend caregiver circles in their in their local communities but it's it's a different it's a different setting when you're realizing that yes we can still enjoy life mm -hmm. even though there's a diagnosis right we, we still can right oh for sure and i think that's one of the reasons kathy and i get along so well is because we both come from the mindset that yes it is it it can be difficult but it doesn't need to decimate people's lives we can continue to have a good quality of life and make meaningful memories and meaningful relationships with one another and like i said you know the people on the cruise make lifelong friends with other people who have been through a similar experience as them because it is it is difficult when you are going through a caregiving journey and your peers, your friends, your other, you know, distant family or whatever, if they have not been through an experience like, like you have, it can feel very isolating. But the people who are experiencing this with you lets you realize that you're not alone and that you don't need to be, be alone and that there's hope after the caregiving journey. There's still life after caregiving. And that, that's another piece of what we will do in 25. We are going to create um, cruise events for 
caregivers that have completed this journey. Yeah. Because um, that that's a whole separate conversation. And once this journey has completed, we do need to figure out where where our world sits and what our plan is for our for us to go forward successful. It's interesting that you you bring this up. Recently, I had a conversation with a woman who became a she's in her fifties. Her husband was diagnosed with cancer, and she wrote a book, and it's called Come Come Home Alive, I believe. And I had a, a long conversation with her, and what what she said to me is. You know, the thing, and I actually never thought about caregiving in this particular way, but it is a very apt analogy. Caregiving is like trying to hike up a mountain, and that's what we're focused on to get through caregiving, right? Is we're we're going, we're trapesizing up this mountain and we're carting around all of the tools that we need to get up the mountain. And after caregiving, we still need to be able to get down the mountain. But nobody's concentrating on how to help people get down the mountain after caregiving. Um, it's like, okay, you're a caregiver, boom, you're not a caregiver anymore. But there's no, there's no. How do you get down the mountain? How do you, how do you reintegrate and use all of the things that you have learned and the experiences that you have gone gone through? And how do you integrate them into the person that you are now? And that you're going to be, and how do you do that in a healthy and wholesome and good way so that you don't uh, regret the journey that you have been on? Because ultimately, uh, the journey that you're on turns you into the person that you are, that you're going to be, and that you're going to become. So I'm, I'm very excited for the caregiver, for the cruises for caregivers who are beyond their caregiving journey to help them regain or understand better how to assimilate that into into being a strong resilient person Mm -hmm. and that i can i feel that in my own life and i certainly understand yeah It's, it's a it's a huge change and a huge step and um it's frightening it really is yeah well there's a lot of life that's frightening isn't there Uh huh. We. <laughs> this is one of them. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. I understand. Mm-hmm. Well, do you have any last parting um, ideas or things that you'd like people to know about dementia supported or and you know I always say dementia su- supported cruises because that's kind of my world, but it's not just people living with dementia. It can really be anybody who is requiring uh, caregiver assistance that could benefit. Um, for people who are interested in this particular cruise in January, what is a good timeline for them to actually make a decision and get going on it that's reasonable? I know people have to think through some of this, right? Well, there's a special a special reason to think about it right now because Holland America has created an option to deposit this and most cruises for twenty five for twenty five dollars. So you can choose the cabin and pick the one you want and hold it for $25 and complimentary gratuities through September 2nd. <gasps> and that so is wonderful. So I highly recommend that you look at look at it, think about it, see what it feels like to you. It is your $25 is completely refundable up until the final payment date, which is October the 1st. So you are not losing your $25, but for simply $25, you can hold the cabin that you choose and um, figure out the details and figure out the rest of it. Right. Yeah. And even if it goes beyond that, it's going to be $350, which is completely refundable, uh, 100% refundable up until that date of October 1. So. If you put down some money and look at the cabin that you think works for you, I I guess I didn't completely explain. There are completely wheelchair accessible cabins available. Mm -hmm. There are not very many, but there are some. And they come in all categories. So the pricing of these cruises is really sincerely based on the kind of cabin that you want to be in. Obviously, an inside cabin without a window is much cheaper than 
a veranda with a balcony. But I do want to caution having no window and no light and no reference of day and night is not what I recommend for clients that have a cognitive challenge. So, so I highly recommend that you look at least at uh, an ocean view. And there are many categories of verandas. And there are, there are some suites left that are still available. Wonderful. Well, I'm so glad that you said the date because this um, helps me re re change my, my podcast sequence so that we will have this episode out early next week. That'd be great. I think, I think that that gives people the chance to look at it, um, look at the website, call me, talk to me, ask questions. Um, there are no silly questions. Just keep asking. Mm -hmm. um, we will just keep explaining how it works, what we do, and how we solve the problems that you are having in your personal lives, because none of us are walking through this journey on the same path. And I'm fully aware of that. So I need to listen to you guys. I need to hear what's happening. I need to hear what's going on so that we can provide the appropriate assist that you are looking for. And so for people who are interested that want to reach out to you, your website is will be in the show notes, but it's Elite. Um, elite Cruises and Vacations Travel.com. Elite Cruises and Vacations Travel.com. And Correct. we will put that in the show notes and you know people will get emails related to it as well. Um, and then the the other thing is if you would like to just have a conversation with Kathy, she's pretty accessible by cell phone. You put your phone number on everything I see. So do you want to let Absolutely. people know what your phone number is? It's 219-608-2002. And that's the direct line to my office. And when I'm not in my office, as I'm not right now, um, because I'm caring for my dad, I have it sitting right here. Okay. So just so. repeat it again for people. 219 608 2002. 219 And that'll go. If, if I don't answer it, it'll go straight to voicemail. And there's been a couple calls since we've been talking. And I will simply call those people back when we're done. Awesome. I am so excited about this. I am so excited to be able to now put on my resume. I was a keynote speaker. Or I'm going to be a keynote speaker. So I'm very excited about the opportunity. So it's going to be fantastic. It it's it's be. going to be wonderful. We just need to get the word out to people that that are interested and would love to have some experiences that are genuinely joyful with their loved ones. Awesome. Well, Kathy, thank you so much yet again for being here. I appreciate you beyond belief. And I um, we will be putting all of your information in the show notes. And I will make sure that we broadcast this as wide and far as we can for other people to hear about so that we can get the, you know, what a tremendous deal for people by the 2nd of September. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. So just give me a call. I'm happy to explain it. And I, and I certainly answer the phone on, on Saturdays. It's not a problem. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you yet again for being here. You're so welcome. Thanks, honey.